Scotty, I'm looking forward to the new video. I've not seen the new oh. TikTok video yet that you said to have a wee nosy. Yes, well, I would love your opinion on it. I've uploaded it on TikTok and on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. uh, it's about independence. And what it's really saying, Kareem, you know you get yeah. these questions by people who are completely ignorant of how the whole yeah. thing works, and they say things like, um, why would you want to trade one union for another? Why would you want yeah. to get out of the union with Westminster and get into the union with Europe? And I've answered it, I've said, because the, the union with Westminster takes from mm -hmm. Scotland and the European Union gives to Scotland. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, oh, because indeed. over the over the last 50 years, Scotland has really prospered from being in Europe. Correct. I, I don't know the exact percentage, but someone said, like, if we were to join the EU just now, Scotland, we would have about up to 95% power of our own affairs, where yes. at the moment we are really a lot less under Westminster. Oh, talking. yes, 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 yes. I mean, Westminster's taking and taking and taking. I was thinking today, it'll <clears> soon be the start of what you call the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. Right. And that's when the Church of Scotland meet and of a moderator. Now, there used to be a Church of Scotland um, uh -huh. just almost every few yards. Uh, right. I was brought up in a place called Greenock, and there was five churches in one square. Right. right? right. And at one okay. point, even when I was small, on a Sunday morning, all you heard was bells ringing and people rushing to church. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, it was it was very, very interesting. You had all these ministers. Now, if we go back about, let's say we went back a 100 years, almost the whole of Scotland would turn out and line the streets of Edinburgh for the Lord uh -huh. High Commissioner's Parade. Right. Okay. Now, if you think the state opening of Parliament is impressive with the gold coaches, you should have seen the Lord High Commissioner's parade. Now, the Lord High Commissioner was representing the monarch. Right. Yep. Okay. So it was yep. usually some worthy or a lord. It was even Lord Wreath of the BBC. And I think maybe he did two years, 67 and 68, as Lord mm -hmm. High Commissioner. So that's the Queen's representative in Scotland. They get mm -hmm. to live in Holyrood House for a week. <laughs> and uh, they hold the garden parties and the receptions. And my mother oh, yeah. and father used to be regulars at these garden parties. Fantastic. You know? uh, it was, uh, it was a wonderful setup. And that was at Holyrood yeah. House. So the Lord High Commissioner's Parade, you had coaches and yeah. horses and the guard. Yeah. And yeah. Um, then, as I say, the streets were absolutely thronged several deep to see this mm -hmm. wonderful piece of pageantry uh, yeah. going to the yeah. General Assembly. And then the people would walk up the Royal Mile singing Scottish psalms. Oh, you know, so God. the Scottish psalms, because not everybody could read, they would put mm -hmm. them into um, poetic uh, style. Right. So, oh, you know, so, so, so you had that sort of thing. Um, how, an example, I mean, this is just an old hymn, but how sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear, he did to me his ear incline, my voice and cry to hear. And you had what was called metrical psalms. So there were hundreds of different tunes that you could sing a psalm to. Right, okay. You know? Right. So, and it would fit in because it was what was known as either common meter or long uh, meter. So, you know, right. there's, um, there's an old psalm, The Lord's My Shepherd, and yes. the tune is crimined. So it would go, uh -huh. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures right. green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. Now, if I took any other tune, that's a tune called Crimmond. If I took any other tune, for an example, that little Scottish tune, The Rowan Tree, which happens right. to be in common meter. Now, just bear right. with me and I'll let you see. Um, 
The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want, he makes me down to lie. In pastures green he leadeth me, the quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make. Yea, though I walk in death's dark veil, him for his own name's sake. You see, so it, it fits in. It's very, very yeah. interesting, anything in common yeah. meter. And you used to have a book that had all the Psalms yeah. and paraphrases, and then the top bit of the book was different tunes you could flip over to play on the organ or piano. Oh, goodness sake. Very interesting. Nice. And the people oh, knew all nice. these, even if they couldn't read, they could sing oh. Scottish Psalms. And yeah. there was one yeah. called the Old Hundred. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Yes? Well, His yeah, praise forth tell, come ye before him and rejoice. And they would just sing these things. You know, yes. it was wonderful. And harmonies. Yes. And if you can imagine a whole crowd singing, like the Welsh singing Land of My Fathers at the rugby, it was just yes. outstanding, you know? A <laughs> sight. Oh, Scotty, I think what's going to be interesting now with what you put on that video, and I think maybe that's something that the show can do from time to time, or what the show does, your show does, um, is it's the time now up to the next referendum is yes. to educate, to educate, educate, talk and discuss. Now, you're always going to have idiots and numpties yes. that are not going to listen, but you've got people that, like myself, Scotty, you know myself, before I started listening to you, I was not for the monarchy. I am now, and that's just by sitting and listening and thinking, well, no, actually, do X, Y, and Z, they have brought this in. Why are we being against the monarchy? There's no reason to be against the monarchy. Well, because you have an open mind and you're of a very high intelligence quotient, and, uh, I mean, I don't know if you've ever done tests, but you are. And um, when you've got that, you think, well, tell me more. And if the other person is not giving you any nonsense, you can say, no, you know, because, you see, I've spent 50 years researching this properly. No, there was no internet or anything. People talk about, oh, I've researched it. In other words, they've stuck it into their search engine and believed the first thing that's popped up. Came up. Yeah. Like that guy Dahoon there, who I would say knows nothing about the monarchy, and he's telling me why are we paying for the Queen's heating bills? Now she pays well, for her own heating bills. Yeah, and at the end of the day, Scotty, you've said this so many times 56 pence of your tax a year goes towards the royal family. Correct. Well spent, money well spent. A 50p, fantastic. That's it. And you know, and what they bring back, and I spoke to people about this, about the houses of residence they have here in Scotland, what they bring into the local economies, yeah. what they can bring in, like what you've suggested at Linlithgow House to do it completely up, have, have tourism even booming oh. even more. There's just so much that can be done. People would fly from all over the world to see Linlithgow Palace because it's beautifully yeah. situated. You know, mm -hmm. it really is Brigadoon. And it was yeah. sacked by the king's brother, the Duke of Cumberland, stinking Billy, who was a nice. bad lot, and uh, nice. you know he was a he was a really bad lot, and he was responsible for a lot of the deaths at Culloden, and he was frightened Bonnie Prince Charlie would set up office in Linlithgow, nice. so he wrecked the place, and it's been wrecked since 1746. Shocking, yeah. You know, two hundred and what, two hundred and seventy. Uh, give me, give, do the do the maths with me. Two hundred and seventy-six yeah. <laughs> years. Yeah, a long time. A very so you know, it's time. been lying yeah. empty for two hundred and seventy-six years. Now at least we've got away with the rates on it. But I think yeah. they should do it up as reparation of damages. And I was thinking yes. this morning, I was listening to the radio, to the serious talk radio thing, the the BBC's yes. talk radio, shall we say. Right. And I was right. listening to that this morning, BBC Radio Four. I'll just say, it, I'll just tell it like it is. And I was yeah. hearing a, a certain politician on saying they were <laughs> thinking about this, they were looking at that, and what these politicians should be doing is holding their hands up and apologising and saying, yeah. "Look, we've obviously got a lot wrong. That's why we're in a mess." Yeah. 
And I think if the government started to own the mess and tell us why we're in it, you know, well, we know 